Welcome back to another episode of Science Everyone. In this episode I want to teach you all about magnetic fields. You may not know this, but around a bar magnet, for example, there's actually an invisible force field. And we call that invisible force field a magnetic field. Now this magnetic field, you can't feel it with your skin or you can't see it with your eyes, but we do have tools in the classroom and if you've got a magnet and compass at home, we do have tools to reveal the nature of this magnetic field to us. And pigeons, pigeons as an example, they can actually feel the Earth's magnetic field um, in their brains. It helps them navigate. So well, these magnetic fields do exist around a permanent magnet, but we can't see them. When we observe them using a compass or iron filings, they take on particular shapes, particular patterns. And we're going to explore those patterns in this episode. Let's have a look at our notes to begin with. The region around a magnet where ferromagnetic objects experience a force, that is defined as a magnetic field. Compass, a compass is just a magnet aligning itself for the Earth's magnetic field, and we're going to explore that this lesson as well. This bar magnet here, which is the type of magnet we'll use in class, and you can get horseshoe magnets as well. This bar magnet has got a magnetic field around it, and there's a couple of attributes, a couple of characteristics to this magnetic field that we're going to explore this lesson. And you'll go on to actually draw these magnetic field lines yourself once you know what to draw. Let's take a step forward. Okay. <clears throat> a magnetic field is a volume of space where magnetic force is exerted. So if we have a look at this bar magnet and the mini compasses, that are lined up along the magnetic field. The needles of the compass, they're like mini magnets themselves. They align themselves according to the larger magnetic field that is being produced by this permanent magnet. It's going around like this. Now, this black sprinkle stuff here is iron filings. Iron is a ferromagnetic substance, so in the presence of a magnetic field, it will interact with it. And so when you sprinkle iron filings around a bar magnet, which we do in class, the iron filings stick to and line up along the actual magnetic field lines. And these are produced by the permanent magnet. You can also place compasses along these field lines and the needles also line up according to how the magnetic field is flowing. They line up to the shape of the magnetic field. All magnets are surrounded by magnetic fields. The shape of a magnetic field can be shown by iron filings or plotting compasses. And we do this in class. Let's have a more closer look, a more detailed look um, into these magnetic field lines. Because they've got a couple of rules that we need to follow. First of all, Arrows on the field lines show the direction of the force on a free-to-move north pole. So your magnet is always going to have a north and south pole. And with these magnetic field lines, we indicate direction using these arrows. With a permanent magnet, your magnetic field always flows north to south, north to south, north to south. That's the first rule. The magnetic field always flows north to south. Second rule. The stronger the magnetic field, the closer the magnetic field lines. So very close to the bar magnet, at the very pole of the magnet, you'll see that the magnetic field lines are very close together. When they're close together like this, that's when your magnetic force is strongest. As you move away from the magnet, these magnetic field lines uh, become more spaced out. And as they become more spaced out, your magnetic field gets weaker. So the further away you move away from the magnet, 
the more spaced out these field lines are, and therefore the weaker the magnetic force. Now these magnetic field lines, they're flowing out the north and they're flowing all the way around back into the south pole. Uh, I think these arrows are facing the wrong direction in this case. It's always going to be flowing north to south. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing, when you go to draw magnetic field lines, you have to make sure your lines don't touch. Okay, Make sure when you're drawing your magnetic field lines that they don't touch. Those are the three rules that you follow. Rule number one is you indicate the flow by an arrow and it always flows north to south. You space out your field lines the further away you get from the magnet. You have to space out the field lines, which indicates, which indicates a decreasing magnetic field strength. Rule number three is when you're drawing your lines, make sure the lines are not touching. The field lines cannot touch. Let's look at some examples. So here's my standard um, bar magnet, where it flows out the north and it flows back into the south pole. It starts to get a little bit interesting when we introduce other magnets though. When we have one magnet with a north pole and another magnet with a south pole coming together, you may, if you've played with magnets before, you may have noticed that the two magnets, north and the south poles, attract each other and they stick together. And that's because the magnetic field lines of this north pole flow into the south pole of the other magnet. And we can show this using iron filings as well. You may have also noticed, and if you haven't played with magnets on your own, that's okay, you can have a play in the classroom with me. When you bring uh, the same poles together, so a north and a north or a south and a south, you'll find that the two magnets oppose each other, they push each other away. And that's because the magnetic field lines can't flow into each other. The north has to flow into the south. But in this case, the north can't flow into the north because it's flowing out of this north pole and it's flowing out of this north pole. And because the flow of magnetic field is flowing out of each of these poles, they end up crashing each into each other and repelling, pushing away from each other. They want to get away from each other um, because they're cramping each other's space. So opposite poles will attract, north flows into south, and like poles will repel each other. They want to move away from each other. Because in this case, the both north poles, the magnetic field lines are flowing out of them and so they are opposing each other. We'll also be using horseshoe magnets. <clears throat> so once again, the north flows into the south pole, and we can loop it all the way around. And as you move further away from the magnet, the field lines become more and more spaced out. As they become more and more spaced out, the magnetic field becomes weaker. <clears throat> We can also show this using iron filings and a compass. So if you're in class, I would encourage you to um, have a play with the different kinds of magnets that we have. Let's talk about the Earth's magnetic field, because if it wasn't for Earth's magnetic field, we would, well, we would be dead. We would not be able to survive without the Earth's magnetic field because it protects us from the sun. The Earth is essentially a giant bar magnet. It has a north and a south pole. Now, at the moment, Earth's south geographic pole is actually the north magnetic pole. And Earth's north geographic pole is actually our south magnetic pole. So when you're holding a compass and that red needle, that red needle, sorry, that red needle is pointing to the north geographic pole, it's because this red needle of the compass is actually a little mini north magnet and the white is a little mini south magnet. So red indicates north. Now this red north mini magnet is aligning to Earth's south magnetic pole. The south mini magnet inside of a compass needle is aligning to Earth's north magnetic pole. 
So it's opposite. Now, Earth's magnetic poles actually have swapped over. Every few hundred million years, these poles actually flip. And we don't understand too well as to why they do this, but according to uh, the metals that we dig up out of the ground, we can look at their atomic arrangement. And we find that over hundreds of millions of years, the poles flip back and forth, back and forth. It's quite interesting. We don't quite understand why or how it does this, but it does. Um, and as it stands, our north geographic pole is our south magnetic pole, and our south geographic pole is our north magnetic pole. And it flows out of Earth just like a bar magnet. It flows out from down here all the way up around into the north geographic pole. And our compasses align themselves to this magnetic field. The red is the little north, and the white is a little south and it aligns with the opposing magnetic field. So why is this magnetic field so important to us squishy organisms? Well, the sun is producing a mighty amount of radiation in the form of solar wind, and it hurls, it hurls this radiation towards us. Our magnetic field is able to repel a lot of this radiation away from us. So if we didn't have this magnetic field, this solar wind would strip our atmosphere, it would um, give us cancer and things like that. So life would not be able to exist, the radiation would be too high. This is why Earth's magnetic field is such a big deal. It allows the Earth to repel the sun's radiation. Now the aura, if you've ever wondered what the aura is, it's the sun's radiation that is interacting with the Earth's magnetic field. Some of the radiation ends up getting diverted to the poles. Ends up getting diverted to the poles. And the ions and radiation that enters Earth's atmosphere actually interacts with the atoms in the atmosphere. And when that radiation from the sun interacts with the Earth's atmosphere, you get chemical collisions and reactions occurring. And we see that in the form of these auroras. If you're more curious about how these auroras work and Earth's magnetic field and its interactions with the sun, click on this video. What is an aurora? What is an aurora? I think you would like to watch it. Let's have a look at one more example of uh, magnets, or maybe just a summary actually. So here is my horseshoe magnet uh, flowing north to south once again. Here is my opposing poles, north and south, north flowing into the south. Um, here is my standard bar magnet, and here is a north and a north repelling each other. So you can pause the video here, take your notes, um, and just come to grips with the different interactions between the different magnets and their poles. From here, we'll move on to our private study. So I'll ask that you do questions 1, E to F. Um, I've got a magnetic field lines goodness booklet for you. There's an experiment to complete in class, and I'll ask that you work on these Education Perfect modules. That wraps up this episode. Uh, thank you so much for joining me in this episode. If you've got questions, write them in the comments or come and talk to me in class. Thanks everyone, see you later.